I love the meaning behind Latinx. I don't necessarily love the word. Right now, dissecting the term Latinx. I have a question. Is Latin music Latin? Like, is that male? Who does it represent? Whether it's female, male, non-binary, Spanish, it's very gendered. And now we're trying to make it more inclusive. Is it a sound? Is it a region? Is it a, is it a, is it a name? <laughs> does the artist himself identify as a Latinx artist? And who actually uses it? Even with my parents, the conversation about like, who are you? Where do you come from? What does that mean? They're like, I, I feel... <laughs> We're sounding off sin filtro. The term is supposed to be inclusive, but the way that it's being used now, it's weaponizing us against each other. Always on top of the hottest topics in Latin music and culture, this is Cultura Clash. Dímelo, dímelo, dímelo. Welcome to Cultura Clash. With us today are three talented driven individuals. La Voz Chilena, Ooh. singer, poet, and instrumentalist, Ooh. Francisca <laughs> Valenzuela. Oy. The award-winning journalist and founder of Hard Knock TV, Nick Huff Barili. Thank you for having me. Thank you, my brother from another mother. And of course, the fabulous former Fifth Harmony star turned solo artist, multi-platinum singer, Ali Brooke. Hi. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna keep it genuine. We're gonna have an amazing dialogue. We're gonna share, we're gonna listen. Mm -hmm. So um, here it is. <laughs> Latin X. The term Latin X. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? Why don't we start with that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to start. <laughs> to me personally, Latin X is a term that I came to know and became familiar with in the US. Okay. Um, I do use the X as an inclusive term in terms of gender, um, whether it's female, male, non-binary. And so I consider Latinx to be a term to be a broad, inclusive, inviting uh, concept that I think seeks to open and challenge the, what we know as the Latin identity in the U.S. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I feel like I recently just kind of got familiar with the term the last few years, you know, I feel like it's, it's newer and in San Antonio, we're a very Hispanic dominated city. I just remember growing up there, we um, would say like, you know, Hispanic, 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 or, you know, of course, us as females would always be like, oh, Latina, Latina. So I feel like um, Latinx, I love exactly what you said. I think it totally encompasses mm -hmm. that and including everybody. And I think it's, it's really beautiful that, you know, we're kind of wanting to educate ourselves further and kind of be aware of people and, and just being more inclusive. I love the meaning behind Latinx. I don't necessarily love the word. Okay, because, elaborate for me, please. Well, I, I think especially when I have conversations with people from Latin America, I think Latin X is kind of hard to say for, for Spanish speaking mm -hmm. folks. So I, I know a lot of people are saying, can it be Latin E or, you know, with the E, oh. Latin E, porque th that goes with our language a lot more. You have Latina, Latino, mm -hmm. obviously that's gender. But then if you want to not make a gender, you could put an E instead of an X because X is kind of hard to say in the Spanish language. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of layers to the conversation. I think we all agree in terms of the need for there to be a language that is not strictly male, female, gender, because we want to be inclusive of a community that doesn't I, that, that's gender fluid. Right. But I think how we use what word we use, I think is still up for debate within our community in terms of mm -hmm. whether it's Latinx or whether it's another word that represents that. So, and I think there's also this idea of what it means to be Latino in the U.S and what it means to be Latino outside of the U.S. And I think wow. those that were raised outside of the U.S. don't feel that great that this, lang this, this word was kind of generated in the U.S. and now it's being told to Latin America, like, you guys should use this word without necessarily having a two-way conversation. Such a good point, especially because, again, it's like the kind of the imposition that comes from north to south, no? But what, what uh, Nick was saying is so great because there is a lot of use of the e ello, like the elle, amigues, you don't say am you go, amigos, amigas, amigues, yes. todos, todas, todes. So that's being in use, even I think in Chile now, where we're going through a really incredible political movement where we're rewriting the constitution. And wow. even young politicians, uh, when they do either social media or they give their formal speeches, okay. they use inclusive language like this. So, so it's great. So it is, it is something that's being acknowledged and incorporated. And I think it's great when the conversation is about change. Absolutely. And inclusivity. So. For sure. And actually, you just reminded me of something. So in really kind of in South Texas, when our parents were growing up, they got in trouble for speaking exactly. Spanish. 100%. And so. because of that, we, like their children, didn't really learn as much because they were trying to protect us. So it was actually very sad, you know? And I actually grew up kind of really insecure about that. And I feel like there are a lot of 
uh, of, of people like me, you know, kids who feel that way. But I'm trying to learn more and I'm, I'm like the proudest of my, of my heritage and where I come from and all that. And I, I've embraced it. Obviously I can, I can sing it and that's my favorite. Like I feel like that's such a beautiful, pure place for me. But you reminded me, such a great point is that when I'm learning more in Spanish, it's very gendered. So you have to kind of remember that. And now we're trying to make it more inclusive. So it's interesting yeah. to see how our language will evolve, you know, in the next few years. And especially as you continue to like learn and develop and have these conversations. Do you feel that there's a pressure here of using the word? Um, I don't know if I feel a pressure to use the word. Okay. I, I think. We, we were having this conversation before Latinx came around, just between Latino and Hispanic, right? That was like the constant debate of what are we? I, yeah, 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 yeah. So I just think this, it's an ever-evolving, you know, identity that yes. as Latinos we are trying to figure out because we come from a lot of different countries and a lot of different backgrounds and I think for political purposes or other purposes everybody uh, tries to put us in a box. But it's yeah, like yeah. as we kind of respond to, hey, I identify with this, I don't identify with this. You know, I speak Spanish, I don't speak Spanish. You know, uh, I think it's part of the conversation that we need to have because there's such little representation of us in the media. Mm -hmm. the, the driver of what our identity is has to come from us because people are not really seeing us on TV having these conversations. Yes. They're not seeing w the different sides of our culture. It's pretty stereotypical and monolithic in a way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's important for, for us to have these conversations and, and share in our communities and outside of our communities yeah. so people can kind of see the things that, that we're dealing with when it comes to identity. So your question about the pressure. Yeah. I do think that the U.S. being this unique place that combines so many identities and it's just this, this, this melting pot of since forever, I do think that the conversation about identity is a very loaded one because there's a history, right? So how do you, it's, it's just the messiness of, move, of moving forward <laughs> and it's going to take exercising mm -hmm. the empathetic muscle and opening your mind to stories that aren't your own. And it's also, if you're thinking about it in, in a generational form, right? What do we tell our parents or our grandparents that identify themselves as Hispanic? Or what do we tell someone that has been through their trials and tribulations and identify themselves as a Latino or Latina, right? Um, according to a 2020 Pew Research poll, most Latino adults in the U.S., 76% have not heard of the term Latinx. Mm -hmm. And only 3% actually use it. Yeah. I'd like to ask you, know, like, how do you describe yourself? Well, I feel like growing up, it was more like Hispanic or Mexican-American. Also, I'd say Latina, Latina, um, which is really, really great. So yeah, and of course, like Latinx too. Um, I guess I kind of just feel like I identify them with them all for different reasons. Chilena, Chilena okay. first, and then Chilena Americana también okay. I use. And then Latina, I would say to, I don't usually say it, but I would absolutely like. Bacán, me encanta. Yeah, well, my, my parents worked for the BBC, and when I was a month old, they separated, and my mom went back to Argentina to raise me. So my first language is Spanish. Uh, then I moved to the U.S. when I was eight, and I feel what? like I've, I've had one foot in each world. And so many of us feel like we're one, like one foot in one culture, one foot out one culture. Uh, and I feel, feel like that's part of the, the you know, our generation. Our we're trying our best yes. to be part of multiple cultures and, and not quite feeling one and not quite feeling the other, but still, you know, having parts that make up who we are. Yes, and I feel like you can't control how you were raised. You can't yeah. control your upbringing. You can control, you know, the different decisions as you become an adult. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. I feel like if we had a better sense of understanding, there would be so much healing happening and, and so much unity. Even for me, you know, like, Sometimes I feel super insecure because I, I, I don't know to speak it perfectly, but I am so grateful to those who do accept me and I, I feel confident in, in who I am and my story. And, you know, now's the time to kind of change what I can change and contribute with what I can contribute with my heart. I was going to say also in terms of what you were saying about the previous generations and the trials and tribulations and the journeys of so many families that have migrated, also what identity has meant to them and how that's evolved and how the conversation wasn't even allowed yeah you know like we're all like about identity which is great yeah. but i think even with my parents the conversation about like who are you where do you come from what does that mean yeah. they're like i i, did. I didn't have time <laughs> for that yeah i yeah, know and it's also like i think just now when they are older and they slow down and, and if they're in a position to they reflect but if not they're just like you know getting everything done totally totally making it happen for the family yes and I feel like you have such a great point. And you know, when our parents were younger, they really didn't have 
a choice, right? They really didn't have those types of conversations. And, and now this generation, you know, we're, we're trying our best to be so inclusive and, and loud and trying to kind of make everyone feel heard and feel like, you know, it's very important to have a conversation of who are you, you know, what kind of makes your heart beat, what's important to you, you know, kind of caring about other people's feelings. And um, I do love that in this generation, you do care about that. Well, I think it's interesting what she's saying because <clears throat> part of the study that you mentioned, it said that 57% of us also identify as everything. So it's like, yeah, maybe only 3% are identifying as Latinx, but 57 of us are okay with Latino, Hispanic, Latinx. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, a, that's an important part of that study that I don't think I publicize as much. What I've been seeing since the election is that Latinx is really getting politicized in terms mm -hmm. of like conservative people are like, oh, that's some like progressive thing. They're not in tune with what's going on. So I think that the conversation is getting more and more loaded every day where people are feeling like, oh, I have to take a stand. It's like, if I'm conservative, I can't like Latinx. Or if I'm progressive, I have to go with Latinx. And it's like, if you're calling the Latino community Latinx and you're not in tune with what they really want to be called, and then like people are feeding into that. And it's like, it's becoming a divisive tactic. The term is supposed to be inclusive, but the way that it's being used now, it's weaponizing us against each other. And I think what we have to get back to is, hey, we can all self-identify however we want, I mean, you said that only 3% people are using it. Yeah. So to say that 3% is going to dictate what 97% are using, mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to, to the rest of the people. So I think that's why we have to be real careful of the way that we move forward is to yeah. be inclusive. And then if you want to self-identify one way, move that way. If you want to self-identify another way, move that way. But let's all be respectful of how people choose to self-identify. I think you really have to go in the community and figure out how they want to be talked to and what is the term that they want to use and not just throw kind of like this blanket term at everyone and think it's going to work with everyone because we're a diverse community. You have to get to know us individually. What might work in San Antonio might not work in New York. It might not work in Miami. It might not work in a certain neighborhood of Miami. So I think you really, I think people have to really go into the community and talk to us and figure out how each one of us perceives, mm. you know, each term and how we self-identify. I'm with you. There's just so much richness and diversity in our culture. Like I'm Salvadorian. I was, I was born here, but I was raised by Salvadorian parents. Mm. But when I speak, my accent is more Caribbean. So, but it's just, I was raised in New York. Like, why aren't we hiding any of the fact that there's more things that, mm. that unite us? And why is it always about separation? If you think about it, I mean, we have the numbers, right? We're 60 million, Latinos in the US, right? We're one in four moviegoers, yet we're 4% of roles, and most of those roles are stereotypical. Yep. But, but you know, it, it, it's part of, of the conversation of, of the construct of the narrative of being Latino in the United States. I think what's important to, to recognize is, there, is there's more that unites us than divides us. So I wanna dive into music, right? So is it Latin, is it Latin or is it Latinx music? or does it depend where we're seeing it from? Like, what are your thoughts on that side? I think it depends who you ask. And yes. I think you should ask the artists where you're gonna classify yeah. them because I think there's, you know, these playlists that are out there, or other people who are just kind of blanketing a whole culture and people might not even feel like they're necessarily identifying that. I mean, even what is a Latin artist? I have a question. Lat is Latin music, this might be a dumb question, but Latin, like, is that male? Do you know what I mean? No, I was gonna say no because I think, I mean, till now, Latin music is like the genre in terms of they the just, parts of the world and the sounds and the language. And it's not gendered, right? Like, no. Just so I'm, because I might not be. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah it's like, I question. might not know it as much. It's absolutely I'm trying, an amazing, I'm, so, like, I'm like, I don't know. Is it? Uh, no, right? I don't think it is. Okay, so Latin music and Latin X music, is that, it's not the same, right? Or is it the same? I guess it depends who's labeling it. If we change it to Latin X, that's more inclusive than Latin, right? Well, one is a sound and a musical genre, and one is. But an is Latin music music in Spanish? Because Caliucci doesn't always sing in Spanish. Cuco doesn't always sing in Spanish. Oh. Does it mean you can speak in English? In Spanish, are you like what what? Spanglish. Spanglish. Yeah. Is it a like, sound? Is it a language? Is it a sound? Is it a region? Is it a, is it a, a name? Does, oh, does the artist, a name. <laughs> does the artist himself identify as a yeah. Latinx artist, right? I think right? that's the most important thing, yeah. It also, again, it's like one, if we are speaking about labels, which always, as an artist, I think it sucks. Like, yes. choose a box, stay there. Right, um, yes, Sorry, girl. it's like a therapy session over talk here. Talk it, um, talk about um, it. Uh, We're breaking out of the girl. <laughs> I'm all the Zoom box. Now we're in real life. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, I do think that if, one speaks to the genre and like what you fill in in the box, right? The sound, 
the language, whatever the, whatever the character, char characteristics that inform that genre. So this, in this case, Latin music, the sound. And I would say in my mind, Latin X has to do with the identity of the artist. Of the artist, yeah. Um, not the genre, right? Not as, no, of course not. Because okay. you could be, and because the way, I, because in my perspective so far, in my experience, yes. is the X has to do with inclusivity. Again, I have, I don't know, because I don't know who's curating this playlist and what the criteria yes. is. Yeah, I feel Sorry, like it's a conversation that's not happening enough because I've seen some playlists. I'm not even going to call the playlist out, but there's Latin X artists that aren't the who themselves wouldn't identify as Latin X. Oh. So it's like, how are you deciding who to put in these playlists? And are you having a conversation with the artist? Because yes. I personally know artists who are in Latin X playlists who, if you ask them if they identified as Latin X for some reason or for the other would say, no, I would identify more with this other term. I feel like I'm getting like more educated too. And this conversation is, is, is great me because too. it's like, y'all are asking questions that kind of make me think like, oh wait, hold on. Like, you're right. Who makes these decisions? Who makes these playlists? Is it a genre? Is it um, an artist? Like, so I don't know. I think this is really cool to have. Um, I wanted to dive into corporate America a little bit. Do you feel that people are starting to use the term Latinx to get into, into, into more different spaces or to kind of, you know, just ride that wave? Uh, I think it's all about the intention. Like, why are, okay. they, why are they doing that? I think if they're doing that because they think that's the cool thing to do, that's the wrong way to go mm -hmm. about it. If they're doing that because they really understand the mission and they're trying to be inclusive, then and it shows in their policies and their decisions and their envi work environment, yes. you know, all the way down. It's like how much of it is a press release and how much is actually we want to be more inclusive of everyone. I think it also depends on the mission. Like I have Rilosa, which is a festival and an online platform, and I do define it as a Latinx platform and therefore I created it and we have a community there and I feel yes. absolutely embraced. And when it comes to Latin America, the word Latinx, people don't really resonate to the word Latinx you feel right in Latin America. I think a lot of it has to do with the language. I think it's, a, it's not Latinx, it's Latinx. -ies. So it's like, it's, okay. it's how, how do you use that word in, it doesn't really fit the way we you use the language, so. And who coined the term? Who coined the term Latinx? I thought, when I first heard the word, I was like, okay, this has to be someone who doesn't speak the language because I don't know how they would put the X instead of the E. But as I started to do more research, the X is connected to a lot of progressive movements. Uh, so I, I think there's certain communities that use it a lot. I think a, a younger generation uses Latinx a lot more, obviously, than an older generation. You know, I, I think academia uses it a lot more too. So. Uh, I think that's why, you know, there's a disconnect between a lot of other places in the U.S. that might not be incorporating yet. It's also, the, the word's been around for like 20 years, but it's only now starting to kind of like surface to a mainstream level. What I see is that I feel that we have people that migrated to the United States that adapted the culture. There's people that came to the United States that didn't adapt the culture yes. and are still 100% their country. I think that we're not gonna get this right now, but the key is to have respect for how everyone feels identified. Respect. Right. It's so true, it's so true. And when you see that, I mean, such beautiful things happen and magic, you know what I mean? We're better together than we are apart. I mean, I hope that doesn't sound cheesy, but it's just, it's just the truth. Is the word Latinx, is it here to stay? Well, I feel like we'll see as time progresses. My, my feeling is that I think it's gonna stay. Uh, I think the spirit of the word is here to stay. Yes. And I think it's what we need to achieve as a community to forever be more progressive and more inclusive of people. Yeah. Whether it's Latinx or it's another variation of the word, mm -hmm. I think time will tell on that part. Especially if it's a word that empowers and identifies. Yeah. In terms of a new idea of Latin identity, I'm all for it and hopefully it'll stay yes. and grow and it'll come like the pendulum, you know, it'll come with challenges and, um, how do you say, adjustments. But I think that's why these spaces are created. <laughs> Yeah, and we're here, me and then once again, thank you so much right, for being here. That's it, man. Boy, we just get up and walk away. That's it. Yo, listen, I'm out. This is Cultura Clash. We'll be here next week.